Hi guys, welcome back to The Average. I think this video is gonna be loads of fun. Obviously you've read the title and I'm gonna be mixing all my paints together. Now a little disclaimer, I will be mixing my gouache and my watercolors and that does not include my watercolor palettes that um, I thought would be too difficult to like kind of scrape into it. And it does not include my massive acrylic set because I just think that acrylic and gouache probably wouldn't mesh well together. I'm not sure, I didn't want to test it and waste a load of paint. So obviously you're thinking, Steph, if you mix all this together, you're gonna get a nice poo brown. But really, my plan is to take the, all the reds, all the blues and all the yellows and put them in separate containers. So we have the three primary colors, then you can mix any color that you want in theory. So technically, when you buy paint, if you're a beginner, all you need is the three primary colors and you can mix any color you want. Obviously that's not the case here. I like art supplies, I buy a lot. And um, second disclaimer, I buy a lot of art supplies because I also have a YouTube channel and I do plan to use all of these gouache paint. Let's move on. Let's get into mixing these paints. I'm very excited. This is inspired by Sophia Nygaard's series where she just mixes all different stuff like nail polish, um, lipsticks and stuff like that into one beautiful colour. So I want to see what the main colour is from all these gouaches. I've got my little spoon here for getting and dumping and then I'm going to wipe it off with this, trying to like not get rid of too much and this is just a cloth. I don't want to use tissue or anything because I think that would just be super wasteful. So I hope that you guys enjoy this fun video. Let's get into it. So let's get started with, I think I will do reds first. So I'm going to start separating all the pinks and all the reds together. Yeah, this grey I'm not sure I'm going to use. So I'm going to put that aside. Any greys, these two greys and whites I'm not going to use. So I have to get rid of those. I think I'm also going to use the oranges as reds because I think they would have more red than yellow in them. And I think they would just make our yellows an orange. So i that's how I'm gonna call it for this. There's a very fine line. So let's begin. Okay guys, so that's all the reds and pinks and sort of brick oranges and browns put together and now I'm gonna mix all this up. At the end of this video, I want to challenge myself to paint something using these three primary colors. So hopefully it's not brown. Let's mix it up. It's looking like a nice red, to be honest. It's quite nice. Um, it's something that I would probably pick out to paint with. So maybe that makes sense because a lot of these colors I did hand pick myself. So it makes sense that overall it would be a color that I would like and pick. So that is the most dominant red in my collection of gouache and watercolor. And I really like it. I think maybe I might have some issues with trying to make some contrast with it because it is very pink but let's push through and do blue next some of these are really blue but i think i'm gonna leave out this row of greens because i think it will make this blue more green and it will definitely make the yellow just green so we're gonna maybe leave out some more of the light greens let me know in the comments if you think that's wrong or right i'm not sure how to judge this one but let's see how it turns out anyway
Okay, so that's what all the sort of blues look like. I noticed that I put this purple in and I'm not sure if I regret doing that, but I think it is more of a blue purple than it is a red, so I think it made sense to put it in. Like I said, I kind of skipped some of the more yellowy greens and I think they're just going to be skipped because it doesn't make sense to put them in here. It would just make this green and saying that I hope that some of the purple hues make this less green and more blue but let's see what happens when I mix up batch number two. That is what batch two looks like. This blue is amazing. I think it really suits this red. And I think this color scheme is kind of gonna go well together. And this could all fail when we put in yellow, but let's test it out and see. Okay, so that is all my yellows and oh, yellow ochre together. Um, probably you're thinking that this one looks a little bit brown, but it is yellow ochre, I believe, so it is yellow. This one is a little bit pink, but it to me it's kind of like a yellowy pink, so I felt like it made sense to put it in here. I tried not to put too much of it in it, so it didn't really distract from the yellows. Now let's get into mixing this final batch of the yellows. Okay, so that's the final batch, the yellow batch, and I kind of like it. I think it is a little bit more orange and ochre than I'm used to, but I think it's a nice yellow. These are the three primary colours that are, I would say, the average kind of colour of all the colours that I own of gouache and watercolours. Let's see what I can paint with this. I really think these three colours go really nicely together, so I'm hoping that it won't be a difficult of a challenge that I think it's going to be, but let's, let's see how it goes. I will be cheating a little bit and be using white. First of all, let's not make the same mistake again and actually swatch these colours like I did before. So this is what it looks like not watered down, and this is what it looks like a little bit watery. Yeah, very nice blue, I think that we can work with that. I think that's pretty nice. Time for the mustard orange, which actually looks very nice. I started off by painting the background with a mixture of the blue and yellow to make this sort of light turquoise colour. And then I wanted to have a little bit darker blue in the background and it took me a while to get this gradient right of what I wanted in the background. And once I had down that layer of greeny blue I wanted to work on the figure in the foreground so this is an image of hopefully my main character of the comic sort of walking down a street looking like she doesn't really care and maybe a little worse for wear and smoking a cigarette and just chilling down a typical hopefully American looking uh, street and yeah I just wanted to see how quickly I could create a scene well, not quickly but just I tried to be a bit more expressive with my brush strokes with this piece and try to see how much I could create with limited time and brush strokes and just trying to be more abstract but in a way that like just block shapes worked and gave the person looking at it an idea or a feeling of what they were viewing. And I really like this approach, I really like painting like that it reminds me a lot of uh, other artists that I've seen do this similar approach and I think it's something that I really want to look into following the style of the comic. I think I really haven't done a experimental style of my horror comic that I'm trying to do this year. So usually when you start a project um, you look into what kind of style you want to do for it. Well I do 
Anyway, if you really have a set style, maybe you want everything to look um, similar in your range of stuff that you create. But I always like to have a kind of a unique style and it's always fun for me to look into doing that and experimenting and finding something different than before. So before I made a horror comic and it was all done with Copic markers and um, pens and pencils and I really liked that style but I wanted to do something completely different. So, so this is really working for me now. I think that this might be the style that I'm looking for. And also I never considered using a limited, I also never considered using a limited colour palette like I have used here and I think it really helped give a sense of mood to the scene and it's something I'm going to look into doing more. Probably not having the same colour palette on each page but having a colour palette within a scene or sort of a chapter of the comic story. Sorry if you haven't heard about what I'm doing, I've been talking a lot about it in other episodes of, well not episodes, in other YouTube videos that I've done but I'm trying to create a horror comic this year and this is sort of my, I use a lot of YouTube videos to push that, drive that project forward and it so far is going quite well. So if you haven't heard of it before and you're interested then uh, subscribe and you can stick along for the ride. We're going to be creating a lot more horror comic issues and things in the future. I also tried to do stuff like last week where it wasn't really involved with the horror comic because I think like I don't want every video to be about the horror comic. So anyway I really like the way that this piece turned out and I think using these paints, these primary colour paints really worked and I hope that you guys enjoyed looking and watching me come up with something with just this limited primary colour palette and yeah. I did a lot of mixing on the paper with the paints and I think that really helped and I also used a skin tone with a little bit of white here and there on the side but you can see that you can create skin tones with red, blue and yellow and maybe a bit of white so it really helped <laughs> to create a nice skin tone and have like a little pot of it right next to me so I could just dip into it whenever I needed to. Okay, I think I'm going to call it because I feel like if I work on this anymore, I'll be overworking it and I don't want to do that. I want to let this be and I like where it's at now so I don't want to overwork it because I like kind of the rawness of it if that makes sense. Making shapes with these colours has been really satisfying. I think it really made something good happen from it, like it had a great outcome I think. Anyway, so let me know what you guys think as always down in the comments and I will read them. <laughs> I think I really enjoyed this one so I hope you guys liked this video if you did please um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed we're nearly at a hundred thousand subscribers which is absolutely insane like if I hit that I'm just gonna be over the moon and yeah that would be nuts so thanks so much for watching again and I will see you next time hopefully bye